Um, yeah, in this uh, brief tutorial, um, we um, gonna look at uh, linear regression from a probabilistic point of view. It's actually quite um, interesting um, since um, we can show that, uh, in particular, the least squares approach uh, constitutes a special case of uh, maximum likelihood. So uh, we start with a uh, definition of linear regression where <clears throat> we have our response variable uh, y that is defined as a linear combination of our input features x multiplied with uh, a weight a. And then uh, uh, <clears throat> there is uh, where we add a residual term epsilon that uh, in the in this case, in linear case, we assume to follow a normal distribution with the mean and the variance. <clears throat> and uh, if we uh, turn this around, as you can see, we can actually define uh, epsilon as y minus alpha transpose x. So, and this actually leads us to um, basically build uh, this as an optimization problem in order to estimate the best um, alpha vector so the alpha vector from the least squares expression so this is basically um, to find the best weight vector alpha transpose that does minimize the L2 norm squared of our residual term epsilon And as, uh, as we mentioned, we can replace this epsilon squared by uh, the definition of epsilon. So this would be the minimum of um, to find the um, <clears throat> alpha vector that minimizes the expression y minus alpha transpose, uh, transpose times x squared. So <clears throat> now we can look at this uh, from a probabilistic point of view. And um, <clears throat> actually, we uh, define this as a joint probability model. So the question here now is defined as how the response variable y <clears throat> um, is conditional on the feature vector s, uh, x, as well as the model parameters. And uh, therefore, what we do is we derive a conditional probability model that is p of y given x and the parameters theta. And therefore we can uh, now rewrite the linear regression problem as uh, p of y given x theta. This is equivalent to y given mean of x and the variance. And here in the case of the linear regression, we um, assume the mean of x to be linear so therefore it's defined as what we've already seen as the alpha transpose times x and the model parameters in our case are alpha transpose and the variance sigma squared so <clears throat> finally uh, we have um, an advantage of using a probabilistic interpretation of the regression, the regression, given that it does follow that um, <clears throat> for actually for or it's straightforward for nonlinear relationships, we can simply replace the feature vector x um, with a transformation of x, given a transformation function phi of x, and that would lead to uh, yeah, replacing um, x with this transformation, transformed x. And the interesting part is this, that this actually does constitute a fundamental concept, um, which is that uh, while the function, uh, this function that we use might not be linear with respect to the feature vector x, it's still linear with respect to the parameters, in particular the weight uh, vector alpha and therefore we can still uh, or this uh, approach is still linear 
And that's uh, this idea of uh, replacing the vector x with uh, some transform vector x is actually called a basis function expansion and it's typically used to generalize a linear to nonlinear model setup. And uh, for example, in the context of supported vector machines, the, this is known as the kernel trick. <coughs> So now we can actually um, use this representation uh, in order to infer the maximum likelihood. Um, so um, this actually, what this means is the um, a mechanism to uh, infer these optimal values for the weight vector alpha. Um, as we've seen before, uh, for the least squares to minimize the difference here to maximize the probability. And um, the main rationale behind uh, the maximum likelihood estimation approach is that assuming that the data would have been generated by the model, the data that we get as output, um, what parameters uh, would likely have been used? So basically what is the probability of seeing the data that we can measure uh, given a specific parameter set? And uh, yeah, so therefore, the idea is basically to maximize the likelihood of the data that we can observe given the inputs given and the parameters. So this is why we can formalize this as follows. You can see the difference here. Now we try to find the arc max. So, um, so we maximize this probability function with respect to the parameters, whereas before we were actually minimizing the squared distance in uh, the interpretation of the classical linear regression model. Um, so what you can also see is that we're here maximizing uh, not the probability function itself, but actually the logarithm, the natural logarithm of the probability p. And this is to prevent some uh, or actually to deal with um, overflow uh, random flow issues uh, with respect to the computation of multiplying small probabilities. Um, and uh, accordingly, for the purpose of um, computation complexity, again, we rather differentiate a sum rather than a product. So what we also do is <clears throat> to um, given that this is uh, designed as a joint probability model, and here uh, we abbreviate that and we look at this, um, we have our data, our parameters, so this is translated into uh, the logarithm of p of x, uh, p of y, I'm sorry, given x and theta, and then we can basically, given that this is a joint probability model, this um, factorizes into the product of the probability of each individual response variable um, yi given the data, um, I'm sorry, given the input uh, vector, feature vector x, y, and the parameters. So building the product over this gives us the joint probability p of all y given x and the theta. So as, uh, as I've just mentioned, we take the log of this and we try to optimize the log and also we transform this into the sum which is pretty straightforward using the log. And uh, also it's actually easier to do the differentiation um, while maximizing of the sum rather than the product. <clears throat> um, so, and therefore we add one additional um, sign, which is that we use the minus sign, put the minus sign in front. Um, in order to turn this maximization into the computationally more beneficial minimization. And what we now have is the negative log likelihood. And it's actually also a term that comes up pretty often. And um, <clears throat> this is what we want to minimize. So this is the final expression, basically, um, estimating the maximum likelihood by minimizing the negative log likelihood. <clears throat> okay, so now this leads us to, um, by expanding 
this uh, the negative log likelihood of uh, the parameters theta um, <clears throat> now by expanding this we um, for the case of using a normal distribution what we get is the ordinary least squares approach so um, assuming P our probability to our probability distribution to follow a normal distribution what we get is basically we can replace P of yi given xi and theta by um, a Gaussian and so uh, having the second equation um, actually uh, replaces P uh, with the Gaussian and then basically as you can see yi um, turns up in the exponent so we have this constant in front of the exponent uh, in front of the e um, the exponential and then uh, in the exponential what we see is uh, actually very interesting because what we actually find here is what we've already seen before is this yi minus alpha i xi uh, in parentheses and then squared so this actually reminds us of, of what we've seen before with the least squares difference. And this actually here constitutes the formulation of the Gaussian. Um, and uh, now we can actually transform this um, by, um, yeah, by using and actually bringing the log into the parentheses. And then uh, what we get is the expression in line three so that we um, as uh, the product turns into this abstraction by including the log in both terms uh, and then again uh, just let's uh, be reminded that we that this uh, constitutes the natural logarithm so actually this is pretty comes in pretty handy with respect to the e and so therefore we can actually um, reformalize this expression and um, then actually we sum out everything and we get the expression in line four and now this is of particular interest uh, because uh, we get a lot of constants so the first term basically constitutes a, a constant because there's nothing that we are actually well um yeah we have this the sigma squared in there we have so we got the variance in there so but the very interesting term here um is uh, that we say okay with the first term being a more of a constant term and then the second one is um, what we've written in line five as the SSE which is um, the sum of squared errors so this <clears throat> actually um, uh, everything that we see here the sum over yi minus alpha i x i squared in line four is actually this um, it's also known as the residual sum of squares. So this is actually again something that we've seen before and there's the direct link to the least squares approach. <clears throat> and um, by ignoring this uh, first constant term and focusing on these on the SSE term on the sum of square term um, in order to um, actually find the best parameters uh, we can, this is what we get, uh, just a second here. So we can reformulate this, um, and that's actually what we've been seeing before, right? So here it's multiplied out in a way, that's basically y minus alpha transpose x squared. And uh, by reformalizing it this way, we can actually way easier rewrite the derivative of SSE with respect to alpha, the weights alpha, and solve this for alpha by setting the derivative to zero and so this is what we obtain and therefore this is very nice because we can actually really solve this we can um, solve for a and therefore this gives us the optimal values for the weights with uh, again with respect um, if we summarize in order to minimize the order ordinary least squares um, minimize the negative log likelihood or maximize the um, likelihood and um, yeah the only thing that we assume is that this um, x transpose times x 
uh, results in the matrix that is positive definite. So that basically means that um, there needs to be uh, more observations than dimensions. So, and that's actually a problem for a lot of high dimensional data sets there. And what that means is that <clears throat> for a lot of high dimensional data sets, we would not get a unique vector of alpha, which also kind of makes sense intuitively. Okay, so this is it for a probabilistic interpretation and perspective on linear regression. Thank you.